Yesterday on the show, we had a brief segment about the solar eclipse that crossed America and the pandemonium it inspired. We ended by mentioning that President Trump had ignored countless warnings from NASA and health officials and gazed directly at the sun without special glasses or eye protection of any kind. It was, and we noted at the time, a watershed event in American history. Even the president saw it, but in a move that is not a complete surprise, he looked directly at the sun without any glasses. Perhaps the most impressive thing any president's ever done. So there you had the president of the United States beating the very axis of the solar system in a staring contest. Top that, Louisiana Purchase, Emancipation Proclamation, Normandy Invasion, Interstate Highway System. You can't. Because as we said, it's the single most impressive thing a president has ever achieved. Now, luckily, many in the media were watching last night, and they instantly understood that we were not kidding at all. There was no irony or sarcastic inflection in what we said, because we're every bit as self-serious and humor deficient as any Washington journalist, and probably almost as dumb. We were, indeed, lavishing praise on a politician for staring at the sun. Nathan McDermott of CNN understood that immediately and provided video to silence doubters who suspected we might be joking. Claire Phipps of The Guardian wasn't fooled either as she explained at length to her readers, nor writers at HuffPo, Mediaite, or GQ, all of whom wrote pieces about it. Brooke Binkowski, the managing editor of Snopes.com, went on Twitter to assure the public that, quote, this is not satire. This is not satire. This is not satire. Well, given that Snopes is one of a handful of outlets working with Facebook to decide what stories are, quote, fake news and should be suppressed, it's impressive that Binkowski was able to know the truth without even bothering to contact us to check, because that's journalism. Speaking of journalism, it is time for a Fox News alert. Lost in the excitement over yesterday's remarkable sun-staring feat were several other pieces of Donald Trump-related news. We'd like to bring those to you now. We will speak slowly for the benefit of those Washington-based journalists who might be watching tonight. First, the National Institutes of Health has announced that Donald Trump's tears can cure human disease. Unfortunately for science, Donald Trump has never once cried. Meanwhile, Apple says it has designed a new presidential version of its popular iPhone. This model comes with no backspace button because Donald Trump does not make mistakes. Nor does the device have a clock since Donald Trump decides what time it is. Also some sad news to tell you tonight. While golfing at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida last week, President Trump was bitten by an exotic and deadly Eurasian pit viper. Unfortunately, after five excruciating days, the snake has died. We're going to leave it to licensed journalists to decide whether those are actual Donald Trump stories or whether they're Chuck Norris jokes. On that sober note, we want to take you to Fox's Greg Gutfeld for more news that reporters will believe about Donald Trump. Greg? Well, you know, I can see why uh, journalists were confused because <laughs> I'm with you. Donald Trump isn't just the greatest president ever. He's yes. the greatest president that will ever be. There That's will true. never be a president better than him, so there's no point in actually having another president. That's my opinion. In fact, I think I, I, I've heard that the U.N. is actually considering naming him president of the universe. This is all going to happen. I predict it. Would you name every one of your children after him? Yes, Male very or much so. Okay. Uh, I've named all my ferrets and all my reptiles after him. You know what? Here, here's the issue with these reporters. They have two choices. So if they thought you were actually serious, then they admit that they're stupid. But right. if they knew you were kidding and still pretended that you were serious, then they're dishonest partisan hacks. So they have to choose. Are they stupid or are they dishonest partisan hacks? Oh, I disagree, Greg. They can be both. Yeah, and they, they are. Can. They can. They are. The they funny can. thing is, I mean, it wasn't in the teleprompter. I just thought it was a hilarious picture of the president staring at the sun. Yeah. I was just joking. Yeah. I thought it was kind of lighthearted. No, there I was sniffing his throne. <laughs> you, were, you exposed the preconceived assumptions of these reporters. It creates blind spots. Literally, it's just like, it's just like an eclipse. It creates <laughs> blind spots so they can't see an obvious joke. They wanted you, what you said to be real. 
so much so that they were willing to lie about it. That they actually, it's the worst part of a young reporter, and you've dealt with reporters, as you were an editor, I was an editor. When they want something to be right, they make mistakes. Right. They, they are like too busy. They're, if you, like I worked in health, in health journalism, somebody will, will write about a terrible product because they want it to work. They want it to work, and so they will, not, they will ignore the research. In this case, they just wanted you to be a sycophant. They wanted you to be what they think you are. So that's why they, they chose to report it that way. Well, that's the story of wind power, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> they've been covering that like it works for decades. Yes. No, you're right. And look, as an editor, and you know this, you, you know, your reporters sometimes go over the line. They write dumb things. Sometimes they're wrong. But the one thing, the red flag for an editor is emotional involvement. If right. a reporter is too intense about a subject, you can't write about your own mom, for example. Right. Because you can't have critical distance from it. Yeah. I don't understand where the editors are. If you hate Trump, if you think Trump is Paul Pot, you know, you're entitled to your opinion, but you shouldn't be covering him. Yeah, exactly. And it, it makes them, it's just, it's amazing. Like, if they actually believe that, how naive are these people that they would actually believe, I mean, believe that that was serious, that they, they didn't see, they just, they just ran and they typed away. And I'm like, I'm a little disappointed because some of those people, they're not stupid. You know, I mean, I know some of those writers and I'm like, how, what are you thinking? Was it just for, just, was it just for clicks? Are you that blind? It's amazing. The, the funny thing is we had just come off a segment where I was critical criticizing pretty harshly his Afghanistan policy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. But see, that's the thing. When you were uh, when you were blinded by emotion, they did not see that. They they did they were wearing eclipse glasses. They cannot see your criticism. They could only see the things that they want to criticize. That's why they should be like the president, stare into the sun bare eyed. Exactly. The very point I was making. Greg Gutfeld, thank you for affirming. Very dangerous thing, Tucker. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Good to see you.